All right, so now it's time for us to cover the heading of admin dashboard. So let's open our admin dashboard component. And in this section for our heading, I'm just going to start by adding some classes. So I will add flex items end, justify between, and margin bottom four. Then within that div, I will have another div with some more classes, flex items end, and gap two. And in here, we will have our search form which is going to be almost exactly the same as on our homepage. So let's create a form first. And within this form, we want one input field. So let's import our input field component. I can copy one of those import statements and just change the name. And down here in the form, I can use that. We need a label. I will leave it empty. We need an icon and also a placeholder. So I would just say search dot dot dot. So now we need a form object and a submit function. So let's go back up to the script tag. And first I want to create my form. I will set this to use form from inertia. And we just want a search property, which I will set it to an empty string at first. Then I will also have my search function and we will have our logic in this function. Now back to the form tag. First, we want to use the V model on the input field and bind this to form.search. Then on the form itself, we can use at submit and prevent the default and use our search function. So this is our form, our input field so far, and this is our form instance and the function. And in this function, we want to submit the information to the same page through a get request, similar to what we did on the home page. So let's use the router from inertia view. Then we want to use the get function and then submit this to the same route, which is admin.index. Then as a second argument for the get function, we want to pass an object which would be our parameters. So we want to have a search parameter and the value of that would be from our form search property. So back to our website, we can see our input field right here. If I add something and press enter, we have a parameter in the URL. So now we just have to handle this in our Laravel application and filter these results. So let's open our user model. At the very bottom, let's create our scope filter functions. We can say public function, a scope filter, and we want to accept the query and an array of filters. Now in this function, we want to check if we have a search parameter. So we can grab the filters and check for a search element. And if that exists, we will perform an action. Otherwise, we will just return false. Now, if we have a search, we want to decide where do we want to search these values. So I can grab the query and use the where function and then pass a closure here so I can have multiple where statements. So in this where function, I can have another parameter, which I will call it Q. And then inside this closure function, I can have my where statements and query my database. So I can use the where function and say where name is like the request search parameter. And let's concatenate those percentage signs so we would include before and after. So this is my first word statement, which I would just look inside the name column. Then I want to have another one. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it here. And I want to change this second one to or where and change the column to email and then end this statement. So the errors are gone. So again, we did this in our listing model for the listing controller to filter our listings. And we are just repeating the same process for our users and we are just changing the column names. So now let's use this filter in our admin controller and on this statement where we are grabbing all the users. Let me put these on new lines again. And before the paginate, we want to use our filter method and use the request function or helper function and pass an array and the key search. Now, since we have a filter, we can also chain with query string. So we would not lose our page parameters. All right. So let's see if this works back to our website. Let's reload the page and search, for example, for this name. And there we go. We have only one and you can see in the URL, we have the parameter. The next step is to add a button to remove the filter and also populate this input field if we have a search parameter in the URL. So let's go back to admin dashboard and instead of setting the search to an empty string, we can use the route parameters. So before the form, let's create a params variable and I will set this to route, which is part of that Ziggy package again, and then params. Then we will set the value of this search property to params.search. 
So that is out of the way and we can see the value in the input field. The next step is to have a button to remove this parameter. So let's open our home component and we have these links here that we use them to remove a filter and we have one for the search right here. So I'm just going to copy this whole thing and close the home component. Then under our form, I'm going to paste that link. So everything here is going to be the same except the href and the route that we are going to. So it's not going to be home, it's going to be admin dot index and we still want to include whatever parameters we have and we will set the search to null and the page to null if there was any and the content of that link is going to be our search parameter and an icon so back to the website you can see we have the button right here if i click on it then it's gone so we can see all the users if i search for admin we have only one of course and I can see this is a little bit off so let me just fix that I will set the padding to maybe six pixel and I think that's good. So that is for our search. And the next filter I want to add is to show only suspended users. So after this div, which wraps the form and this link, I'm going to create a comment and say toggle role BTN. Then I will have a div here and add some classes. Within this, we will have an input field of type checkbox. Let's also give it an ID so we can click on the text and toggle this and I will call this toggle role. Then I will add some classes and format my code. Then under the input, I will have a label for that toggle role. And again, I'm going to add some classes. And for the text of this label, I just want to say show suspended users. So this is the whole thing for our toggle button. We have a wrapper, an input field of type checkbox and a label. Let's save this one and go back to the website. Here is our checkbox and if we click on it it will check and uncheck so i can see there is a bit of a space here and this is because of this margin bottom so let's delete this from the div which is the wrapper here it is it looks nicer now again we want to listen to this checkbox and perform an action based on the state of this checkbox so let's go back to our component and on our input we want to listen for the input changes using the input event listener and I will have a function which I would call it toggle role. So let's go back up to the script tag and create that function. Let's set this to an arrow function. And in here, we want to have an if else statement and check for the state of that checkbox. So we need to accept the event so we can see if the target is checked or not. So in our if condition, I can say if the event target is checked, then do something. But if it is not, then do something else. And the actions we want to perform is basically adding another parameter to our URL so we can handle it in our admin controller. So let's copy this router statement from the search function and paste it here. And we want to submit this through a GET request to the same route and set the search parameter to whatever search parameters we have in the params and also have a new parameter. So I will call this user role and the value of this is going to be suspended because I just want to show the suspended users when this input is checked. Now, if it is not checked, we want to reverse this action. So let's copy it and paste it here. And we just want to set the user role back to null and keep the rest of the parameters as they were. All right, so let's see how this works. So going back to our website, if I click on this checkbox, then we have user role suspended. But you can see here that our input field is not checked. And if I click on it again, it is not going to work properly. So let's go back to the component and fix this. First, we want to go down to that input field once again. And I want to bind the checked attribute to our params, then user role. So if we have a user role in our URL parameters, this has to be checked. Now let's go back to the website. You can see it's already checked, but again, this is not going to solve our problem. If I uncheck this, you notice we still have the user role, but now it is set to nothing. That's why this is still checked because we do have the key, but there is no value for it. So to fix this, we can go to our toggle role function and instead of passing the parameters to the get function on the router, we can pass them to the route function, which is part of that Ziggy package. So let me do this and you will see the difference. I will cut this object and remove this comma and then inside the route function, 
after the name of the route, I'm going to add a comma and paste my object. All right, so now the parameters are inside the route functions. So basically the Ziggy package is in charge. Then I'm going to do the same thing for this else block. Again, I'm going to cut this object, remove the comma, and inside the route function, I will paste that second argument. So this is our function. And now let's go back to the website and let's remove the parameters. Select this checkbox. We get our parameters in the URL. And if I uncheck, it is completely gone. So the key and the value, both of them are gone. And that's exactly what we want. Because we are setting the state of this checkbox to this parameter on the URL, then we need to remove the whole key value pair from the object. And passing the parameters to this route function works the way we want. So that is in terms of our front end. And we are able to add a parameter to our URL. And we just have to handle that in our admin controller the same way we handled the search parameter. So we want to accept a user role parameter in our filters function. And then in our user model, we want to have another query. Let's copy this first statement here and paste it here. And then say, if there is a user role, then do something. And basically what we want to do here is to grab the query, add a where statement and say, return the results where the role of the user is the same as request user role, which is going to be suspended. So this is a very simple where statement and we want the role to be exactly the same as this parameter in the request. You can also hard code this and say, for example, suspended like this, but I'm using the request helper function here. So if you had other parameters, for example, if you wanted to add another filter for general users, you could simply copy paste the code we had in our admin dashboard right here and just change the value of this user role. You can even have a drop down menu here, same way we did with the role and grab the value from these options you have in your select input field. So I think that would be a good practice for you if you want to add a drop down menu here instead of a simple checkbox. But anyway, if we reload our website, you notice we have only suspended users. If I deselect this one, then we back to all the users. So only suspended and all the users. So we are almost done with this video. One last thing I want to add is to include this parameter in the search function, because if I select suspended users and then search for a name, then we will lose that suspended parameter. This is easy to fix. And the same way we included the search in this toggle role function, we just want to add user role to the search function and where we have the parameters and set the value of this to params user role. So now if we go back to our website, for example, we have these two users with the same phrase in their name. So I can search for that. We have one general, one suspended. If I check this box, then we get only that one and we have our parameters in the URL. We can go the other way around as well. So if I say only suspended and then this professor guy, then we have only one and we keep those parameters in the URL. So we are almost done with our admin dashboard. And the next step is to create user pages. So the admin can go to the user page and view the listings and approve or disapprove a listing. So that would be our next task.